This morning's Breakfast Bible Bites will continue with Psalm 50 and verses 19 through 20, revealing the wicked tongue of the Christian pretender. The milia in this portion of Psalm 50 continues with a discourse about the Christian actor, the one who acts within the church peer group as if they were exceptionally holy and dedicated, even learning to speak Christianese. But apart from Sunday service, they live like the devil, usually with a worldly vocabulary. Verse 19 reads, You let your mouth loose in evil and your tongue frames deceit. Our Lord, through the psalmist, now brings up a familiar trait of the Christian actor when he refers us to the ninth commandment about bearing a false witness, which reveals the foul hypocrisy of a person within the church who, through a personal carnal agenda, has self-elevated to assume a position of stature and authority. The true spiritual health of that person becomes readily apparent by the tongue. A foul and deceitful mouth reveals a foul heart. These are the folks who attempt to deceive others, casting culpability at others in an effort to deflect from their own unrevealed guilt. They are their own fools if they think the Creator doesn't see through their schemes. They are corrupt in His sight, a stench in His nostrils. God will cast these hypocrites into the lake of fire. We must stand by His word if we are not to be deceived by their glib tongue. They may preach loudly and pray eloquently, but the God of all truth loathes them utterly. Revelation 21 verse 8 reads, But for the cowardly and unbelieving and abominable and murderers and immoral persons and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars, their part will be in the lake that burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Psalm 50 verse 20 reads, You sit and speak against your brother. You slander from your, uh, slander your own mother's son. The wicked man in question narcissistically stamps his brother in the back and at the same time hypocritically dreams that he is a favored son of heaven, that God accepts his words of affirmation and acclamation without question. Regrettably, not much has changed since the days of Jude as we read in Jude 1. 12 through 13. He writes, These men are blemishes at your love feast, eating with you without the slightest qualm. Shepherds who feed only themselves. They are clouds without rain, blown along by the wind, autumn trees without fruit, and uprooted twice dead. <coughs> they are wild waves of the sea, foaming up their shame, wandering stars, for whom the blackest darkness has been reserved. If we are not to be deceived by these Christian pretenders that infiltrate our assemblies, we must rely on insight from God's Holy Spirit and be like the Bereans in Acts 17:11. After they listened to a teacher, now these people of Berea were more noble-minded than those in Thessalonica, for they received the word with great eagerness, examining the scriptures daily to see whether these things were so.